What's up, buddy? Welcome back to the classroom. Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you the difference between long-term and short-term dating strategies. Now, this doesn't actually just apply to dating. It also applies to making money, fulfilling your dreams to chase your passion and turn it into a full-time job. This just applies to everything in life, but I know that most young men are struggling with dating right now, so that is gonna be the primary focus of today's video. However, whatever it is you're trying to improve, this way of thinking is still going to help you, okay? So first of all, let me just lay out what the differences are between short-term and long-term. To be clear, this is going to be an immediate success in whatever it is you're trying to pursue, right? So short-term means I want it now. I need to get it within the next couple of days, the next couple of weeks. I would even argue short-term lasts for several months, if not years. Here's an example, boys. Imagine when you're in high school, there's that one kid that's super popular, okay? So from grade nine, since the age you were like 13 years old until 18 when you graduate, until grade 12, this one kid was super popular, right? But at the time, that seems like the only time it matters when it's in high school. However, five, 10 years out of high school, you go to a reunion, you're gonna see this guy, he's gonna be overweight, lost all his hair, he's been working the same shit job for 10, 15 years, and all of a sudden you're gonna be like, man, in the long term, this guy didn't do so good right? He peaked. He peaked in the short term in high school. So the reason I say that though is because I know that a lot of the people that watch these videos, you're a young man. You're like between the age of 15 to 22, 23, and you think that you're not able to achieve things in the long term. The reason why is because you don't have experience. You haven't been around that long, right? I remember when I was like 15 or 16, I liked girls, but they didn't like me. So I'm just like, that's it. I'm done. I'm never going to be able to be successful with them. Okay. So I want to remind you that you have a lot of time ahead of you and you need to adapt to the skill set of long-term thinking, especially when it comes to making money or today's topic, getting girls, okay? Long-term is going to be where you do get that thing that you want, but you're going to have to wait a little bit. You might not get it right now, but what if I told you that if you wait, you can get more of it, okay? There's the famous example where they did a study and they asked people, you know, do you want one marshmallow now? Okay, you can get one marshmallow now, or do you want two marshmallows after like 30 minutes? And they were able to determine differences in people's intelligence based on how long they waited. People that are smart, they get more by waiting longer. People that are not smart, people that are dumb, impulsive, they want stuff now. And because of that, they don't get the long-term stuff, okay? So not to bore you, don't worry, we're going to get into the actual stuff, but I just wanted to explain the difference because this applies to everything, man. Like short-term... Your body's going to crave sugar and carbohydrates because you get that immediate energy. Long term, it's going to kill you due to heart disease, diabetes, obesity. Long term, vegetables, proteins, fats, things that you might not enjoy as much in the short term. This is going to make you last longer. Okay? Now, really quickly, I also want to address something between men and women. As men, we tend to start a lot later in life. Okay? We are late bloomers. We're not as successful with dating. We're not as successful with making friends. We're actually like slower when it comes to maturing too. It takes us longer for us to form our like finished intelligence, okay? That's why women are so much better at school than us. That's why girls go through puberty before us. Men are just a little bit slow, okay? And we don't pick up things as easy. So even if you are ahead of the curve, as far as compared to like other men, women are still ahead of you, bro. But here's the difference. When it comes to dating and sexual marketplace value, AKA, how attractive you are to people within the dating context, right? You could be the most valuable guy in the world, but if you have no charisma and nobody wants to date you, you have a low sexual marketplace value. If you're a woman and you're an amazing volunteer, you help sick kids, you donate money to charity, that doesn't mean you're a low value person because men aren't interested in you. It just means you have low sexual marketplace value, okay? So the first chart we're gonna just show you really quick is gonna be S M. V, all right, sexual marketplace value. Now, then we don't have sexual marketplace value till about 25, 26. Now, obviously, this is what I mean naturally, right? If you're watching my videos, if you're in my socializer school, you have the cheat code. So like you are able to do things that most men are not able to until the age of 30, all right? If you watch all this, if you see my other content, if you're in my paid community, you're gonna learn all this super fast. So if you're like 18, 19, 20 years old, bro, you're gonna be able to apply all this at like your current age, 20, 21 years old.
But most of us, we're stupid. We don't have a family member. We don't have a good dad or a mentor that teaches us these things. We don't learn them until we're about 30 years old, okay? This is why the average age that men get married is around 30 to 35, because they spend their whole 20s fucking up, and then they learn, and now at 30, all of a sudden, women are more interested in them. Now, women are fucking way ahead of us until that point, okay? So women actually peak with their SMV, sexual marketplace value, around 22. Now, after this, they slowly start to become less valuable when it comes to dating, okay? This doesn't mean they're a low-value person, just like it doesn't mean you're a low-value person until you figure this out and you're the age of 30, okay? That's just the way it goes because much like how women tend to mature faster and become more intelligent faster, they physically start to age a little bit faster too. And here's the thing, men age just as much as women, but the difference is most men never had good looks to begin with. <laughs> so, you know, it's not that big a deal. Like we're not as valued by our physical appearance as women are. However, women, once they start to lose their physical appearance, they don't get as much attention from men. They aren't as likely to get the high value men that they want. Men are much rather dating younger women. And this starts at 22, and then by 30, that's like the big cutoff point, okay? Now, men, again, it's kind of the opposite. At the age of 20, unless you are aware, or like aware of all this stuff, you're usually behind, okay? You got a part-time job. You've only ever dated girls that are like the same age as you and they're dating guys that are in their mid to late 20s, if not in their 30s. You don't have any money, you don't have any resources, you don't have skills, you don't know what you're good at yet, and most importantly, you don't know the game. You don't understand this chart, you don't understand social skills, okay? So you have the biggest thing going for you, which is experience, but up until this point, you don't have experience, all right? So you're basically just like a wounded gazelle, okay? And they're lions, they clean up. But here's the thing, boys. Start low, but then all of a sudden, boom, now we go up. And then, you know, after 40, 45, we start to go down as well. Women, they're starting to peak at like 18 and then 22. And then everything's like, whoa, holy shit. And then boom. So they go down a lot quicker. All right. And in the short term, they have way more dating options, which is why it's recommended most women get into relationships with high quality men in their early 20s when their valuable is the, the most, right? But guys... We're actually recommended to not get into relationships until at least our late 20s, if not our 30s, because that's when we have more leverage. We have way more value, okay? So I'm just gonna draw this really quick to show you my point, because um, you know some of you guys might not understand. All right, so we got the 22 peak, and then we got the 30 peak, okay? So women, it's kind of like this, all right? Turn 18, all of a sudden, Oh, I guess this marker's not good. Yeah, turn 18, boom, we're really good, okay? But by the time we hit 22, we're peaking. Now it's like a very slow, steady, and then around 30, it just drops. Pretty dramatic, okay? So that's essentially when it comes to women long-term and they're dating. But with men, <laughs> boys, it's rough, okay? We, we ain't doing much, all right? Even at 22, you ain't doing much. And then as you get towards 30, all of a sudden, hey, we're figuring it out. Now we got money, we got experience, we have social skills, we've been through a couple relationships, we know how to go and approach and talk to girls. Shit's actually pretty good. And here's where things get interesting, okay? You know, we both decline after about 40, but this is where the intersection is. All of a sudden, between like 27 to 30, guys are on the come up, women are starting to go down. And this is where we actually surpass women. Now, if you are an absolute stud athlete, musician, talented actor, whatever, you're going to be peaking at like 20, 22, and you're fine, okay? You're going, to, you're going to continuously peak, but like you're all the way up here if you're a celebrity and you're a young man. But as a woman, you're not going to do too good as you get closer to 30 because guys are going to start to want to go in this area, okay? So even if you're like a super great girl, amazing personality, guys are still going to prioritize beauty, and we're going to go there. And if you're a guy and you're really good looking, you're a fucking Chad, you're a physical specimen, but you don't have any money, you don't have any skills, you don't have any friends, you can't talk to girls, you fail all their tests, etc. You are not going to do good until right here because all the women would rather date this guy instead of that guy. Okay, so it makes total sense why there's a value discrepancy despite being different ages. Okay, so anyways, now that you've understood this concept, we can get to the different strategies between short term and long term okay because you know certain things you do they actually pay off in the future but there's other things you can do to get immediate results as well question is do you only want short term or do you want long term also 
why not both? You could actually have both if you really want to, okay? So what we're gonna do is talk about some quick short-term strategies. And these short-term strategies are mostly going to be focused on getting access to women in the short term. However, it doesn't necessarily improve any other aspect of your life, okay? Which means you're gonna have your fun now, but later on, you're not gonna be having so much fun, okay? You're basically relying on being young, having energy, and having time. These are your most valuable resources, okay? But when you're older, you have different resources, okay? You don't have as much energy. You don't have as much time. You don't have as much uh, friends. The people that you hang out with might not be willing to do the same things as you because they're older, right? So two different strategies at play here, all right? So let's talk about the things you have right now. Let's say, you know, you're a young man. Okay, you got time, you got energy, you got a lot of friends. Why? Because you just got out of high school, social media, you got all your buddies, you're still going to parties, you're in college, university, there's a bunch of people around you. Things are already set up. All you have to do is have a friend, he invites you, you're good, okay? So short term, all of this is working for you. But what are things that you don't have when you're young? I know what you don't have. You don't have experience. You have no idea what you're doing, bro. Okay, and that's not your fault. When I was 19, 20, I was clueless too, okay? But I had all this, so it was enough. But later on, when I had this, and then if you combine that, again, if you take care of yourself, you're gonna have all of this past the age of 30 as well. I'm still in my 20s, but I don't wanna just let everything go as soon as I hit 30, okay? What else do you have? Money. You've been working for five to 10 years in a specific industry, hopefully a high paying skill. Maybe you started your own business and it was like this, right? You, you know, huge failure, huge failure, huge failure, and then boom, on your eighth year, you're laughing, okay? That's obviously ideal, but you know, point is, it's a different strategy because long-term you're focused on other stuff while you're not worrying about short-term stuff, right? You have experience, you have money, you can buy back your time, okay? buy new time, because now you can create time, you don't have to cook, you don't have to go to the gym because you have like your own personal workout set up at your house. You can essentially pay people to like bring it to you. So you can actually buy back your time. Same thing with like filing taxes, changing your tires. You essentially have a lot more time. And if you have this successful job or business set up, you can just decide which days you work. So again, long-term, suffer in the short-term, but long-term, all of this is super worth it, okay? However, there are certain things you can do in the short term that are gonna accelerate this process, right? So for example, what would be a job that people that have time, energy, and friends would be good at, okay? What would be an area where you can go and meet a lot of people relatively easily? Let's give you an example, okay? Bars and clubs. When you work or participate in some kind of thing at a bar or club, you're constantly gonna be surrounded by young, attractive people, okay? You're most likely gonna know a lot of people that go to that club because all the people your age in the city, if you're like 19 or 20, they go out once in a while. So every time you go out, you're gonna run into people, which means you meet their friends, they introduce you to the girls they're with, you're always gonna have options, there's always somebody going out on the weekends, and if you go to bars and clubs, you constantly are meeting new people. And a lot of the people there are also the same age as you, and it's not necessarily that you guys are the same age, it's that you're likely to have mutual friends. So you get introduced to people, and because of that, you get a lot of access to girls, all right? So that's the number one thing that people do in the short term in their early 20s, and it works really effectively, okay? If we wanna go one step further than this, what if you work there, okay? Bartender, you're the one behind the counter, you're the one serving drinks, you're getting paid really good, and you have status there because the people there see you there, you're dressed up nice, you got like a black dress shirt on, you're working with all these other servers and other bartenders that are attractive girls. So you have social proof, so that's good. Social proof, same thing if you're a server at a restaurant, you're working with all these other baddies, which means you guys hang out together because you know, you're working a basic server job. You're not worried about money. You're just having fun. Each time your shift is out, each time your shift is over, you and your friends, you all go out together, you go visit friends at another restaurant. So, you know, restaurants are good as well. Okay, no, this mark's not, marker's not very good. Now, what else? Okay, what if you're a DJ? What if you're a promoter? What if you're the guy performing in front of everybody? Instantly, you're on stage, you're looking great, everybody's paying attention to you. Maybe if you're only making 50 bucks, it doesn't matter. Maybe they just give you free drinks, okay? 
when I was 19, 20 years old, if I had a buddy that could get us into my, a club for free just because he played like an hour long set, that's the best story ever. That's the coolest thing ever, okay? Especially when you're a noob. So again, this is really good in the short term when you're young and it's because you have time, energy, money, and friends. What's another option? Traveling, okay? Boys trips. When you're young, you have break when you go to college or university. So you generally have like a couple months off in the summer, you get like a fun job, you go up to the cottage and you work at like a local convenience store, maybe you do some construction, maybe you do a co-op, right? Something towards your actual career. But a lot of kids, especially if they come from a good family, you know, university or college, they just kind of wing it, they take the summer off, and this is a perfect time to travel. So a lot of the time, if you're in college or university, or even if you're just 20 to 22 years old, you have friends that are going somewhere for the summer. In Ontario, it's very popular for people to go out west, and they work at a hotel or a ski resort in British Columbia or Alberta. They do that for a couple months. One of my good friends, he worked at a golf course. He did something related to like business there, but basically he just wanted to golf all day. And he worked at Jasper National Park, which is like this gorgeous mountain range, huge mountains, there's bears rolling around. So each day he was golfing, he was just living his best life out there, had a blast, okay? So this is something that's very easy to do in the short term, in your early 20s. Everybody else is broke, so you're not really worried about spending money on experiences. You think, man, I gotta travel while I'm young, you know, life's good. And you could travel at any age, but the point is, most of your hometown friends, they're all gonna be traveling at this time. So it's the easiest time to go. You don't really have to set up a plan. You just have friends that are already going and you just hop into their plan. Oh, how much is it gonna cost? Okay, we could split it four ways. All right, I'll book my flights. We'll all book the same flights. Then you and your buddies get to travel across the world and have a blast, okay? This is actually really fun to do. I've done this a couple times with friends, gone to the United States, did road trips across Canada, been to Asia. You and a couple buddies, book some flights, stay in some shitty Airbnbs, smoke some dope. Usually costs maybe one to $3,000, depending where you go. The richer kids, they tend to go to like Europe, so that's a little bit fancy, but the point I'm making is, based on your current friend group, this shit always happens. So it's very easy. You don't actually have to do anything. It's already there. Why is it already there? Because you've been friends with them since school. You have energy, you have time, you have friends, okay? Now, as you get older, you stop having time to do all this shit. You have to get a real job. Your buddies that are single, they get girlfriends, so they don't want to go out anymore. Um, you don't have as much time to travel because you have like a full-time job. You only have a week or two off per year. You got to move out of your parents' house and you have to save money. So because of that, you can't afford to travel, okay? You also don't want to go to bars and clubs as much just because you don't have friends that want to do it. So you don't want to be the one that sets it up. So if you're not getting invited, you're not going to go out. Same thing with restaurants. You can't make a living wage working at a restaurant as like a server or a bartender. I mean, some of them do. Some of them do pretty good. But for the most part, you have to start actually taking seriously what you do. So you have to go into a job that pays better. And the problem is most jobs that pay good, they're boring, okay? It's actually hard work, you know? Construction, accounting, corporate, office jobs. Sometimes you gotta commute very far. A lot of my buddies in their mid-20s, they got out of school and now they're miserable because they're working full-time and they're making like, you know, a nice salary, but like their job's fucking boring. They don't care about it at all, but they need to get that money so that they can afford the uh, rents, okay? Now, it's okay to do this. And what I did actually, I hacked this system. I did this and I filmed it and I made money doing it. So I got to do all this and make money at the same time, which allowed me to have my cake and eat it too. But not everybody's, you know, a savage like me. You're probably not gonna be able to do that, all right? Some other short-term ones, photographers, all right? A lot of guys that take photos of, uh, you know, models basically what they're doing is trying to fuck these girls okay so you'll have a guy he'll offer a bunch of free photo shoots to girls and guys his instagram will look really good you know a bunch of pictures of girls a bunch of pictures of guys and then he'll follow girls and be like hey i love your aesthetic would love to shoot with you you know and girls they want hot photos of themselves on instagram to get validation and money if they're models so what they do is they meet up with the photographer the photographer takes them a couple different locations you know takes photos, but while he's doing that, he's like, you know, change your hair, do this, do that, yeah, yeah, get on the bed, yeah, yeah, that looks good. Or you switch locations a lot, so it seems like you're actually on a date with them, you're going to different places. It's a fucking greasy thing. I think these guys are losers, but a lot of them, they do it for pussy. The problem is, <laughs> there's no money in it, bro. None of these guys are making any money. In fact, they're losing money. They buy these expensive cameras, they drive far to do a photo shoot with a girl for two hours, just because it gets blood flow to their cock when they actually get to spend time with a girl. 
And, you know, a lot of them, they use this because then more girls want to take photos with them because they look at their profile like, oh, man, I love your work. This is how they meet hot girls and they get to hang out with them. But it's kind of like a nerd thing to do. So, you know, big shout out to all the dorks that are taking photos of girls for free their entire 20s. I hope you guys find a way to make money. Maybe you actually do want to be a photographer, but that's another thing that works in the short term. Okay, now let's start to talk about long term. And again, long term requires patience. Most people aren't patient. That's why they get stuck here and then they decline afterwards because they don't prepare for the long term. All right, now here's the long term, long term play. We're going to go over a couple options. Number one is school. I know that I've done videos before saying school's bad, waste of time. Every single guy selling a make money course tells you that university and college is a scam. But the truth is, it's not. It's just the program you choose. There's plenty of programs that make a lot of money. And not just money, but like they actually help society, right? I'm talking about STEM, engineering, mathematics, building bridges, construction, doctors, medical advisors, lawyers. Like these are all prestigious titles, but they're also ways to contribute value to society, okay? Like if you go to school for STEM, you know, engineering, math, doctor, slash medical, even public services like cop, firefighter, like you're actually doing good for the world and you get paid pretty good. I think cops make about $100,000 a year. Firefighters, they make a little bit more than that and they work less. So firefighters, super good job. Construction workers, 75 to $120,000 a year, potentially, once they get started. Same with the skilled trades. So there are a lot of options for you, okay? The problem is there's no glory, okay? You're working full time and you're not around other people. When you go into the skilled trades, you're working with a bunch of dudes in their 50s who smoke and swear and they break your balls and they just seem grumpy, okay? That's not as fun as working in a restaurant or working at a gas station and hanging out with your buddies three nights a week. That's why most people don't want to do it, okay? Same thing with going to school to be a doctor or medical or skilled trades. First of all, you need to be smart enough that you get a scholarship or take out a huge fucking loan, which most people don't want to do, or have parents to help you pay for it. And a lot of people just don't have that. So, you know, STEM, medical, doctor, there definitely is a little bit of privilege to that kind of career. But if you're smart, you work hard, you take out loans, you will make that money back once you do graduate, but that's a big risk a lot of people aren't willing to take, okay? Now the last one is something like STEM. You can easily go to like a two to three year college for a practical diploma, which means you don't have to pay an exorbitant amount to go to university. However, because of that, you still get like a nice high salary job with only two years of school and not as much student loans. In fact, a lot of skilled trades, they actually help pay for your tuition, okay? So, you know, if you're young or even if you're in your 20s, even if you're in your 30s and you want to turn your life around, skilled trades is great for you. Becoming a public service worker, firefighter, cop would also work for you. But if you're younger and you want to go to school, that's good too. And here's what's great. If you do go to college and university, part of the reason you're paying is for the experience. You still get to do all of this, right? But you do it at the same time as this. And that's my point. You could still do all this as you're older, but it's for fun. It's not for money, which means you're not too concerned. Okay. Now the next thing that's really good long-term is to build a business. All right. Now, usually what you should do is work in an industry for a couple of years. So, you know, for example, do skilled trades for four or five years, get your master license, actually know what you're doing and then start your own skilled trade business. So work as an apprentice for another electrician after a couple of years, do your test, get the certification that allows you to start your own electrician business. Now you're a really good electrician. You charge a base amount and then you pay a guy that's an electrical apprentice underneath you, you know, 20 to $30 per hour. You take the profit. Okay. It's your ass on the line if you screw something up, but then you start to hire more electricians. Next thing you know, you have a whole company where you're getting like, you know, 20 to $50,000 a month revenue and you're not even doing electrical work. Or maybe you like to do it yourself. I remember when I worked in the trades, I loved just driving around out to the country, doing a little fix here and there. I was the assistant to an electrician, so I don't know anything about electrical, but I would just hand the guy a wrench and then we'd get a coffee and we'd drive two hours to some farm and I got paid pretty good to do that. And it was a really chill life, okay? So you can actually start your own business as a tradesman after just two or three years in the industry. And if you wanna get like your actual legit license, usually about five years, it depends on your hours really. But essentially now by the age of like 25, 26, 
you can buy a house because banks love skilled tradesmen. So you can get a fucking mortgage approved pretty easily. And then after that, you have your own business running. Next thing you know, you start popping out kids because, you know, your girl problem is handled since you have now created a bunch of free time where you can go and meet more women. You can travel, you can do all this because you have a business set up. Now, this doesn't just mean skilled trades, it also means online stuff. So the first business I ever started was um, social media marketing. I helped companies with their ads and stuff like that, social media content. Then I did YouTube automation where I made highlight videos on YouTube. The niche was like sports, MMA. At the same time, I also started a business doing property management. So me and my buddy, we would help students find houses to live in while they were in school. And we managed something like 85 students at the same time. I think we were taking care of six or seven different houses. So we were making fat stacks of cash every single month. And I definitely paid taxes on everything. But these are all just random businesses that I started before I invested all this into becoming a YouTuber, making my first comedy channel. I took all the money from my other businesses and I put that into my own thing. And now I'm a full-time YouTuber. And this is my second channel or probably my 10th channel by now. But the point I'm making is now like I get to do this as a business, but it took a couple of years of doing bullshit. Okay. Like the most money I've ever made was last year, but I've been making YouTube content for like at least five years now. Right. The first year I didn't make anything. Second year I made a little bit, you know, people didn't believe in me until it worked. All right. So that's one of the other problems with long term. Okay. Short term. Wow. You get all these results right now. Later on, you get nothing. Long term, you get nothing for a while. And then finally, boom, all of a sudden, everybody believes in you. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Another thing that works long term is exercise. All right. Now, here's the beauty about being young. You don't have to work out. You don't have to eat that good. And you're probably in pretty good physical shape. If you take care of yourself over physical time, then you're not gonna get fat. You're not gonna be too skinny. You actually get stronger and you stay in better shape later on. Whereas all these guys that aren't taking their health seriously at all, they just look like shit after like 25, okay? You ever go on Facebook and look at girls you knew in high school and now they're all like significantly more heavy than they were in high school? Same thing with guys. Like guys you went to high school with, you go on Facebook and they look like they gained 50 pounds. Bro, people in the short term, they aren't thinking about this shit. So they just, don't take care of their bodies and then they go downhill after a while, right? So long-term exercise, okay? The other thing is socializing. When you learn how to be a socializer, you know how to approach and attract girls in real life. You don't have to rely on dating apps. You don't have to rely on going to the clubs or bars. You don't have to rely on having friends invite you to places. You can do all this on your own, all right? But the problem is it takes a while to get good at it. You have to actually leave your comfort zone. You have to go and talk to people you've never spoken to before. You have to get rejected a bunch. You have to get all this experience. So if you get like a paid program like I have, you'll be able to get results with girls in like 30 to 90 days. But if you had to figure this out on your own, bro, it could take you anywhere from like one to five years, man. All right. So even if you start at the age of 20, just because you're working your part-time job, you're saving up for school, you're, you're busy with all this, you're not going to have as much time for girls. And because of that, you don't have as many hours doing this. So you might get to 25, 26, all of a sudden, Girls are starting to be like, wow, this guy, you know, he's, he's working full time. He's starting to look like a man. He's exercising. And then you go and talk to her, but you have zero riz, zero charisma because you just haven't had time. Okay. This brings me to the next part of the video, right? We've kind of identified the short term and the long term strategies. But the other thing I'm going to talk about now is how it affects your dating. Okay. Because what happens is all these guys in the short term, you know, they don't have any money. So after a certain age, right? Let's say like 27, 28, they can't make a living working in a restaurant anymore. They can't make a living working as a photographer. They can't make a living at their minimum wage job. And they probably don't want to go back to school because society tells you that you're too old to go back to school. So shout out to everybody in their forties and fifties going back to school. But most people, they care way too much about what others think. So they don't want to go back to school. So that's not an option for them. Okay. Skilled trades, probably not. What do they do? They take a job at the same place they've been working the last couple of years because all their friends are there. So, you know, it's very hard to leave a working space when all your friends are also there because you feel like you're leaving your family. You feel like you're leaving your friends. That's why you see people that have been working at the same bar like 10 years or the same grocery store because they know the owner, they know everybody there. That's their whole social circle. That's their whole tribe. So even though they're not getting paid much, that's their whole identity. They'll never leave. That's where it becomes a disadvantage, right? 
And this happens around, I don't know, 27, 28, and people just go downhill. And now all of a sudden, you're behind on your bills, you don't have time, you don't have energy, your friends are all, you know, again, they're in the same position as you, not doing too good. So you're stressed out, okay? And that's bad, bro, we don't want that. We want the stress, stressed out, in debt, right? So no money. And when you're stressed out, you're in debt, you're also not in shape, and you have no risk, okay? So this is a tough spot to be in, bro. I mean, you had fun for the first couple of years, but now you're kind of fucked, dude. And this is when you get desperate, and when you get desperate, you settle, all right? That girl you knew in high school, the first girl that matched with you on a dating app, the first girl that you know gave you her phone number, now you're ready to wife up the bitch because you don't have any other options, all right? You have zero options. So you get desperate. You just take whatever you can get. And that's a bad spot to be in, but that's what happens to most guys if they fuck around in the short term, okay? Now let's compare that to our long-term homies, all right? These are all the chads down here. And by the way, you can still do both at the same time, but be smart about it, like I said. You know, I did both, but I always knew, like, okay, long-term, I have something I'm working towards while having fun in the short term, all right? So I hope that you understand what I mean. Also, don't be too hard on yourself. Don't go on monk mode for, like, four months or five years. Like, you can still go out once in a while. You can have some booze. All the guys telling you don't drink, we all drank for years, all right? I used to drink like a fucking fish. No, oh, don't drink alcohol. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'd be so hypocritical to say that, all right? Long term. Now you have money though, okay? You started off at this skilled apprentice trade, you know, still pretty good, like minimum wage. Now all of a sudden, oh, look at that income. Income's doing good, all right? And then exponentially it grows after 30. I think men start to make the most money of their lives after the age of like 50 or something. But boys, if you climb the corporate ladder, you're gonna easily be making 100K by 30, at least probably 200K by 35, depending what field you're in, you know, at first, it's not much, but it's pretty good, okay? Now, the other incremental risk is if you start a business, right? If you're like me, you're working part-time, you're fucking partying, you got a YouTube channel, property management business, you're doing five things at once, right? You have a couple good months, you have months where nothing's good, but then, boom, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, holy fuck, to the moon, bro, you're flying, you're actually in space, okay? That happens too, but that's the thing with entrepreneurship. It takes years, man. It's long-term. All the people that doubted you, all the people that were like, oh, you're gonna be a YouTuber? What the fuck are they doing now? Nothing, but guess what? You're all the way up here. And then they start asking you for favors, bro. That's my point, okay? So long-term, business does pay off. And at the very least, you can get hired. If you have all this business experience for a couple of years, but it doesn't work out for you, or maybe you decide, I don't wanna work 24 seven. I just wanna like have a consulting job that's chill, whatever. You can just cross over to the corporate world. They will hire you because you have real life work experience, all right? So that's a different type of experience, not the same one when it comes to bitches, okay? But again, you have money, you have work experience, now you have options, all right? Me, for example, worst case scenario, I could always go back to the trades. I got my drilling diploma, I could go back into drilling, it's like a very boring job to me, but uh, pays a lot of money, and they're always needing people, okay? I could always go back to property management, I could do consulting, you know, I have skills, right? So I have options. Now, the next thing I have is connections, but not just any connections, valuable connections, okay? People that I've met over the years that were also in this. If you become friends with a guy and you help him out when he's like broke and then he makes it big, he's gonna help you out as well, okay? I remember the people that helped me when I was on the come up. I remember the guys that had my back. I remember the people that screwed me over and didn't believe me. They're all up here. I don't give a fuck about them anymore. But the people that actually have my back, I'm gonna take care of them, okay? I'm gonna retire a lot of my friends. That's one of my goals, so. Buy my products so I can retire my friends, okay? But anyways, you meet people, whether it's a boss, a mentor, they help you because instead of like, you know, playing video games, going to the gas station to hang out with your buddies, you're like actually showing up early mornings to talk with your boss, maybe pick his brain, buy him a coffee, ask him like some ways that he could give you advice, you know? You learn all this stuff and you meet people and they kind of help you later on in life. So essentially like networking is very important, all right? Now, in the short term, you're gonna take an ego blow. You're gonna be like a doormat, you're gonna be a noob, an apprentice. Um, you're not gonna be taken seriously, but you're a sponge and you absorb everything you learn and that pays off way longer uh, down the road, okay? So, more options, connections. Now you have money too. You've been making a consistent amount of money, whether through your job or through your entrepreneurial ventures. And most importantly, you're starting to free up your time now because now 
let's say, you know, 25, 26, 27, girls are still a priority for you, but before you couldn't even afford to go out to a date, right? Because restaurants now, you know, fucking you go, you order like a water and an appetizer, it's $80 all of a sudden, right? Inflation, it's bullshit, okay? Caught the living in Canada, it's crazy. But guess what? These guys have that problem. We don't because we worked hard. When I go to a restaurant now, I don't even worry about what the bill is, okay? Usually it's like a hundred bucks, that's cool, no worries. I make enough money that I don't even care, all right? And this actually helps because a lot of guys that are brokies, they're like, oh, the woman should split the bill. Yeah, bro, you're broke, okay? Just fucking make enough money you can pay for it, dude. Don't be a knob, right? But because of that, now you have time to go out on weekends. You can go to whatever location you want to. You can spend money to go to a concert or a festival. Cold approach girls there. That's the other thing. You have more options for girls, all right? Why? Because you can go to nicer places, okay? You can travel. You can go and you actually spend your own money going where you want to, not where your buddies are going. You don't have to go to Cuba or Putacana for the fucking 30th time, all right? Fuck Dominican Republic and Mexico. They're both dumps, okay? Not the country itself, but you know, these tourist spots that are like a thousand bucks. You go there for a week, you sit at the resort and you drink. You know, okay, bro, it's, that's cool if you're like broke, but you can go to fucking Europe. You go to Australia, you can go to Bali, Thailand, go to some cool ass spot. And you don't even need that much money to do that. But the point I'm making is you have your own job or you have a seasonal job that you set up. You're a consultant, you work remote, whatever it is, because you worked your ass off those first couple of years, you can travel anywhere. And when you travel, you can meet attractive women that also travel. Maybe they're on their leap year after university. Maybe they just have money and they travel the world because they want to. Maybe they also graduated, right? But guess what? They're not stuck in their hometown eating processed foods, getting fat like most of the girls that are in your hometown, okay? So you can travel, you can relocate. You don't have to be in your same city forever. You don't have to hang out with your same buddies from high school. You have all these different options, okay? The other advantage too is that now you can invest in yourself, all right? So let's say you're in the skilled trades or you run a business. By about 28, 29, you can buy your first property, get a down payment, pay the mortgage, and then you can rent the place out. Somebody else lives there. They pay the bills, the utilities, etc. You own the property and you pay off the mortgage as you're there. But guess what? You don't even have to live there. You can get a family member, a friend, the guy that lives there to manage the place for you. Now you have that asset and you can travel somewhere else. When I was in Bali, I met this dude, um, him and his girl, they bought a house in like 2019. And essentially now they just rent it out to a family. And the amount of money that they charge covers the bills and the mortgage. So they live in Bali and this dude wakes up, surfs every day. He's got like an online business, doesn't work that much, uh, but he doesn't have to because cost of living is so low and this house is paid off. So again, this long term is paying off. But these numb nuts who spent money every weekend, who were constantly going and not thinking about long term, they're like working a job, but like they're not setting aside their money. You know, they're having fun, but long term they're kind of fucked. Here's the thing. Now you can have fun. Okay. Long term, you can have fun. And the other part about this is like, if you need help with something, you can invest in it, okay? I don't have to change my tires. I don't have to cook my own food because I can just pay for it as a service. Just like if you're not very good at exercising, you could hire a personal trainer. If you need help working on something one-on-one, -on -one, like getting advice on how to talk to girls, how to overcome mental health issues that involve approach anxiety, hesitation, etc. People like me have created courses such as Socializer School where you get access to like 30 plus hours of video tutorials, step-by-step -step breakdowns, weekly Q&As. You can even book one-on-ones with me specifically if you make enough money and I can help you solve your issue way faster. And this is just like hiring a mentor to help you with business, okay? If you're running a business and you're making 10K a month but you wanna make 100K a month, find somebody that's making 100K a month in the same niche as you and be like, hey man, could I pay you for your time? How much for an hour of your time? These are my issues. Maybe he'll help you for free, bro. Maybe he's like me and he has a channel where he gives you free advice. Like this video is free. Hundreds of other videos on my channel are free. But if you want to work with me directly, you can pay me for my time. Why? Because you now have money. Unlike these guys, these dudes are fucked. You know where they get their advice? Fucking Reddit, bro. Or their stepbrother or some dumbass that has no idea what they're talking about. Because that's their only option, remember? No options, okay? So... Big plus sign here, big plus, and big minus sign there, okay? Now we can also talk about, since you're making money now, since you have more time, how can you modify your life to attract more girls, right? I know we didn't really talk about girls this whole video, ironically, but 
what are some things that you can do? Okay, because you got the game now, you got the money, you got the game, you're learning, you have a mentor, you're getting experience. Also, you have more energy because you're taking care of your health. You're eating food that's tasty, but it's actually good for you. Okay, but what are some ways you could kind of invest in yourself, right? To uh, get some baddies, all right? Number one, instead of going to the club, you could just buy your own club, dude. Fuck it, all right? I know so many dudes that buy restaurants or clubs. They hire a bunch of attractive servers. And look, I'm not saying you should buy a club and then bang all the employees there. But what I'm saying is like, if you own a club and you run the club and you're there, you're basically funneling attractive women into the club. So you're constantly surrounded by them. And this doesn't mean you have to like take them to the back room and be like, listen, like suck my dick or I'm kicking you out. But you get to meet them. You get to walk around, hey, I'm the owner. Is there anything I can help you with? Hey, actually, I'd like to bring you guys to the VIP section. You guys are gorgeous. Come, you guys get free shots on us. This actually makes you more money. So you essentially start making money by running a restaurant with attractive girls, you know, modeling agency. This is extreme. You need a lot of money. But a lot of these dudes, they start like a swimwear brand or some kind of company where they essentially have like a product that they sell and they need to have attractive women working there, okay? Models, bartenders, servers. And this isn't just for women, it's also for networking. If you own a restaurant or bar, all the high level guys in that city, they'll visit there. You come to them, talk to them at the table. Hey, I'm the owner, how can I help you? This one's on us, here's a free bottle of wine. I wanna give you guys a free bottle tonight. My one buddy, he's a really good club promoter. He used to go on Facebook and he would look up people's birthdays. And whenever there was like a weekend coming up where a couple people had birthdays, he'd message them and he'd be like, look bro, I'll give you your first bottle for free. You can bring 10 people free entry to the club. They'd show up, they'd bring 20, 30 people usually. 10 of them were in there for free, 20 would pay. And then after the first bottle, they'd buy like five or six bottles. So he'd actually like 10 times his investment. And again, this is a way to make money but also spend time with people. And if you're very passionate about food and restaurants, then it's cool, you could start a business, man. Maybe your dream was to be a chef, but you can never afford it, okay? Now that's an expensive one though, you don't actually have to do that. The best one, honestly, is just traveling because you can go to all these spots where your dollar goes so much further. There's people traveling there, like the locals, um, you know, they always think that you're cool because you're from somewhere else. And I don't mean like being a passport bro where you go to like Colombia or Asia. I'm talking about Europe, bro. Go somewhere in Europe where you got gorgeous young women and they think you're the coolest dude ever because you got an American accent and you run your own business on a laptop. You could literally spend days cold approaching, right? Like in Ontario, it's fucking cold half the year. In America, you know, a lot of the time, the women there, you don't really want to date them, okay? And when you have options, you can meet the people you want, okay? Which means new social circle, right? Just imagine this right now. Imagine if you had unlimited money. Where would you go to and what would you do, right? You'd probably go somewhere that's warm You'd buy a villa on the beach, you'd surf, you'd chill, you'd drink, go and join a gym, do jujitsu, work one hour a day, and then the rest of the time, walk around, boom, you meet an attractive girl, okay, go on a date with her, make your girlfriend. All this unlocks in the long term, okay? But the problem is, most of you fucks don't want to wait till about 27 to 30, all right? This is where it starts. Now, here's the danger, okay? Most guys get to this point, things are starting to look good, okay? They're getting attention from girls. They got a nice like condo or whatever. They got a car. They're in good shape. So they, you know, they get a solid girl. But now they're like, okay, I'm ready to settle down. And boom, they're off the market. As soon as they're, as soon as you're peaking, and they're going down, you're off the market. You're sold. You're done. And you know, people know this. Okay, just look at it like it's business. Something is losing their value. You know, girl's stock is going down. Right? She wants to get the best price she can. So that's what she does. Okay. And most guys, since they don't have anything going on down here they fall for it, all right? So you gotta be careful, okay? There is a lot of uh, risk there. The next thing that you can do is invest in a personal brand. This is something I see all the time, okay? I don't go on social media much, but I understand like who's making self-improvement content, business content, etc. All these guys online that are like helping people, building personal brands, whether they're comedians, business owners, whatever, they essentially spent years in an industry made a nice amount of money, maybe they already got their wife, they got their house, they got acquired. Now they're bored at like 35, 40, and they're like, well, you know what, I wanna help other people. So they start a personal brand. They blow up on social media. And what's cool is, you don't have to be old to do this. Like, you know, I'm in my 20s, uh, Alex Ramosi, he's like 33, 34 years old. He worked his ass off in his 20s. He, he set up Gym Launch and then Acquisition.com. Now he's worth over $100 million by like, 31, 32, so he's like, I'm just gonna do free videos online, right? 
So that's the point. Whatever you're interested in, you can now build an online brand. If you're making a couple hundred K a year, or even like 200K a year, now what you can do is every Saturday, Sunday, you can make YouTube videos, okay? You can make videos on something you're interested in. You could review movies, you could do streaming video games, you could do pranks, you could do videos where you teach people something about your business, you could talk about ancient history, right? The opportunities are endless. And if you do need help starting a YouTube channel, turning your uh, you know, personal brand into a profitable business, you could check out Socializer School, my paid community, we're actually adding a YouTube course and a paid community course too. So after you do have a successful personal brand and whatever it is you want, you can monetize that and make money every month, okay? So this is a very useful skill you can develop as well. There's also other videos on YouTube on like how to start a YouTube channel if you don't want to join my course. But dude, personal brand is huge because this actually helps you with networking. It also helps you get business opportunities. And when you travel, you can easily meet people wherever you go, build a social circle, and most importantly, all the other dudes that you meet that are also high value, you know, you join a mastermind or you join like socializer school, the same group that I was telling you about where you have all these other guys that are doing well, making money and they're the same age as you. Now you guys can all travel together to places. And when you travel together, you can help each other. You know, when I was in Bali, I lived in this house. One guy was a personal trainer. One guy was like a mental health expert. One guy was really good at surfing. One guy was really good at like business and e-com. We had like a video editor. Dude, literally there was like, six super talented guys and we'd hang out every day and help each other with our businesses plus we had a blast we had fun that's way better than these fucking momos in the hometown okay i'm not shitting on people that you've been friends with for years but it's like if you want something else you now have the option to get it okay so that's the long-term benefit i'm sure there's a couple others but i think that you guys get the gist of this what i want you to do is go to the comment section and let me know what your long-term plans are because statistically speaking you are more likely to actually succeed on your goals if you write them down, if you tell other people about them. So please do that right now. And I also have a free community. If you can't afford my paid community, I do have a free community. It's called Socializers. And it's like the junior version of Socializer School. Within my free community, Socializers, you get access to a free course I made called the Socializer Protocol. And the protocol essentially covers all the stuff that you need to have long-term success. I created a workout routine for you. I created worksheets you could fill out to identify what your strengths and weaknesses are, what to improve. I have a guideline for how you could set your goals. I have something for developing a hobby and turning it into a profitable business. And in addition to this, I created daily habit trackers. So you could actually print out the worksheets in my free group, print them on the wall, and each day, just go and check them off. Yep, did my cold shower, did my motivation, did my socializing, did my three cold approaches, did my workout, and worked on my business. And each day you actually have fun checking off the list. Like even me writing on the board right now, it's fun. That's totally for free in my free community. But if you have money, I recommend the paid one, okay? Anyways, hope this helps. As always, let me know what the next video is that you wanna see, boys. I'm really enjoying these fucking whiteboards, okay? I'm loving this whiteboard game. And uh, I hope these videos do good because I like making them. So let me know what topics you want next. And as always, leave me a comment telling me about that one time that I saved your life, okay? You know, remember when there was that cougar that was about to attack you and I choked out the cougar? Tell me about that. Remember that time I sent a rocket to space to, uh, you know, kill all the aliens that were about to destroy Earth? Tell me about that. Remember that time your younger brother got his leg amputated and I sewed it back on? Tell us about that in the comments, okay? Thank me for that time I let you borrow my Lambo. All right, bro. You take care. Peace.